Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus pilot and welcome to this video where I will explain the changes in the engine start procedures that Airbus has recently introduced. Now all of you are familiar with the engine start procedure in the A320. You turn the APU bleed on, you turn the engine mode selected ignition, start engine 2, then start engine 1. However, if you want to do single engine taxi, you start engine 1 first and then start engine 2 later on. Now, that's where a potential hazard can occur. Now imagine you're a part of the ground crew and depending on what the pilots decide, whether they want to do single engine taxi or not, maybe engine 1 is started first or maybe engine 2 is started first. Especially when you're wearing a headset, when there are loud sounds from other aircraft nearby, it can be very easy to miss hearing the engine that's getting started and therefore there is a potential hazard that people may get too close to the engine being started and there is a potential for confusion since it is unclear because it changes every single time depending on how the pilots feel they're gonna do things. So that is quite a hazard for the ground personnel. And therefore Airbus has decided to change the engine start SOP so that engine number one is now always started first. But Let's have a look into the implications, because I'm sure all of you will be aware that previously engine 2 was started first because it powers the yellow hydraulic system, which pressurizes the parking brake and the brake accumulator. So what's going to change if engine number 1 is started first? Well, let's start this little excursion into the background by having a look at the brake pressure indicator. You can see currently it's fully charged. However, we have no hydraulic pressure available, so... If the brakes are being modulated now, you will see the brake pressure go down rather quickly. So let's give that a try. We'll release the parking brakes here, and now I'm going to apply the brakes a few times. So, brake off. Now let's go one, two, three. You can see how that's going down really, really quickly. Overall, Airbus ensures that you have at least seven brake applications available on the brake pressure accumulator. Now, those of you who have previously used the single engine taxi out SOP will be aware that the single engine taxi out did say in the very first item that you check the brake accumulator pressure and if necessary use the yellow electric pump to pressurize the brake accumulator. Now let's have a look at how that's gonna work. So I'll turn on the hydraulic system display and the hydraulic elect pump. Now let's see what happens. We can see the elect pump pressurizes the yellow system and the PTU pressurizes the green system and now the accumulator pressure has already recharged. So that's a fairly quick process. Now if we turn the yellow elect pump back off again, then we now have our accumulator recharged for another seven applications, at least. Now, if engine number one is started first, engine number one pressurizes the green hydraulic system, providing the normal braking. So in other words, number one is normal braking, number two is the backup system. Respectively, green hydraulic system normal braking, yellow hydraulic system is the um, alternate braking. Now, The single engine taxi SOP called to start engine number one first and thereafter run the afterthought procedures, keep the APU running with the bleed off and then taxi out with the yellow hydraulic pump on. Only after the yellow hydraulic pump was turned off again you could start engine number two so that the PTU automatic test completes normally. Now. That's what's going on in the background here. Luckily, that is not as much of a problem for us when we are starting the engines normally. So during a normal start where both engines are started, number one is started, powers the um, normal braking system. Then number two is started, powers the um, alternate brake system and pressurizes the accumulator. Perfect. Now, let's go ahead and have a look at that in action and let's see what kind of changes happen to the aircraft's hydraulic systems, which is basically the one system that we care about when deciding which engine to start first. So, let's turn the beacon on. 
be sure the parking brake is set and then let's go ahead with a new procedure and start engine number one first. So this is the normal engine start procedure now. Once the engine mode selector is set to ignition start, we verify that no amber indications show in the upper ECAM and in, G in the engine page anymore. And then we can go ahead and start engine number one. Now, the engine start is a fairly normal start there, and there is not much that you actually need to care about that would be different to the old procedure where we started engine number two first. But now with the new procedures, the ramp agent and anyone around the aircraft will know that engine number one will always be the first engine to be started. Now some airlines already had this procedure implemented anyway because they saw this danger earlier on, but it used to be official Airbus SOP to start number two first and then number one second. Now this has changed, so now all airlines should start to implement the new procedure. Now, engine number one is just about to complete its start. Here we go. Even though I have no idea why it's running up and back down again, that's got to be a bug in FS24, since the thrust levers are in idle. All right, now let's have a look into the hydraulic system page and just have a look at what we see now. So now the green system is pressurized, which is directly connected to engine number one, and the blue system is also pressurized. But you can see that the PTU is not active, as it will not transfer any pressure from the green into the yellow system. So now we have only green and blue providing primary braking. So if we now release that parking brake and start pumping the brakes a little bit, you can see that I'm pushing the brakes, but nothing happens since the accumulator only shows the alternate brake pressure. In other words, the normal brakes are now functioning and Airbus must have conducted a risk assessment and came to the conclusion that the normal brakes are sufficient under this situation so that the engine 2 can now be started normally. So the next step in the engine start is then simply engine 2 start. Well, and that's the entire normal Airbus engine start SOP, plus some of the backgrounds and some of the implications on the system side. I do hope you found that one interesting. Leave your feedback in the comments below and with that i'm very much looking forward to see you guys again on the next one in the meantime be sure to like comment and subscribe and if you really love what i'm doing on this channel i would appreciate a small donation through the buy me coffee link located in the video description below last but not least there are no changes to the standard single engine taxi out sop so if you're interested i will place a link to my single engine taxi out tutorial in the video description below so you can have a look at that to refresh your knowledge about the single engine SOPs. Thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one.